Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here from Crow Watch. In this video, we're gonna help you figure out whether biomedical engineering is the field for you. We're gonna go over salary and compensation of biomedical engineers. We're also gonna go over demand. How much demand are biomedical engineers currently expecting? And we're also gonna go over interesting things like demographics and more. Biomedical engineers apply knowledge of engineering, biology, chemistry, computer science, and biomedical principles in the healthcare industry. They help create things like artificial organs, prosthetics, health management systems, and more. Biomedical engineers can be involved in research along with life scientists, chemists, and medical scientists. They can also be involved in software development, designing computer hardware or software for medical science uses. Some biomedical engineers even develop models or computer simulations of different human biobehavioral systems. They can also be involved in preparing procedures and writing technical reports. Biomedical engineers tend to report pretty good job satisfaction, and they also tend to report high meaning in their jobs. According to a pay scale survey done a couple of years ago, 69% of biomedical engineers reported extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their job, and 82% reported that their work makes the world a better place. Many people in the U.S. workforce report low job satisfaction in their careers or occupations. This is why we created a program called Choose the Right Career. This will help you figure out the best career for you. It's a seven-step program. We try to analyze your interests, your personality, how much money you want to make, where in the U.S. you want to live, and your purpose. And we apply all these factors to help you choose the right career for you. Check out the link below for more details. Just like many of the other engineering fields, biomedical engineering is a male-dominated occupation, although it's probably a little bit more female-dominated because it's involved in the healthcare industry. So we don't actually have statistics on biomedical engineers themselves. It's too small of an occupation, but we do know the demographics of engineers. 83% of engineers were male in the survey done last year. 10% reported that they were Hispanic Latino, 77% reported that they were white Caucasian, 8% African American, and 15% Asian. So definitely keep that in mind before entering this occupation. It's most likely a pretty male-dominated occupation. Also keep in mind that many of the job opportunities require a bachelor's degree. In fact, according to the Occupational Information Network, about 53% of employed biomedical engineers have a bachelor's degree, 30% have a master's degree, 7% have a doctoral degree, and about 10% report other. What's interesting is I was looking at a lot of job postings related to biomedical engineering that kind of goes against this Occupational Information Network survey. I actually found quite a few job postings that actually didn't require a bachelor's degree. Now, a lot of this might be overlap between uh, biomedical engineers and biomedical engineering technicians. That might be what's going on, and then maybe the recruiter puts in a, it should be a biomedical engineering technician role, but it's actually, they list it as biomedical engineering, but I'll show you right now. Okay, I'm going to use the Google search engine. I'm going to type in biomedical engineer jobs in the United States, and I really, really love the Google job posting platform. It pulls in a lot of job postings from LinkedIn, Next, and all these kind of like niche little websites, but one thing I'm noticing is, yeah, there's a lot of overlap, like right here. Biomedical engineer level three, this is somewhere in Oregon, Clack, Clackamas through for Kaiser Permanente. Minimum five years of experience servicing medical equipment. They actually kind of want some of these uh, biomedical engineering equipment technicians, CBAT, AAS degree in biomedical equipment service technology. So not necessarily a bachelor's degree, which is really interesting. So maybe this might actually be a biomedical engineering technician job, but kind of interesting. So to show you a very different kind of role, this, this is an advanced biomedical engineer, and this actually this position actually does require a doctoral degree in biomedical engineering. So very, very specific requirements, and pretty much to work for the Department of Defense, you also have to be a U.S. citizen. Not an easy job to get, this one. We'll take a look at one more scientist slash biomedical engineer. And again, very, very different requirements. So bachelors of science with five to seven years of experience in essay development. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. Or a biomedical engineer. So the requirements to become a biomedical engineer deeply depend on the industry you're trying to work in. If you're trying to work in the federal government, most likely a master's or PhD or even possibly less, maybe a uh, bachelor's degree. But you also see some tiny little companies that really don't have these kind of requirements. So before getting that doctoral degree in biomedical engineering, you should absolutely look at job postings first. You might be able to just get a lot of these job opportunities with a bachelor's degree. I even saw a couple that just require an associate's degree, but these are most likely more biomedical engineering technician kind of roles, but you really do see 
a lot of different requirements for biomedical engineering jobs. Next up, we're going to talk about wages and salaries for biomedical engineers. The new numbers are out. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2021, the average base salary for a biomedical engineer was $101,020. In 2021, biomedical engineering is the eighth highest paying engineering field. If you include software development, biomedical engineering is the ninth highest paying engineering field by base salary. But biomedical engineers have seen pretty good wage growth over the past couple of years. In 2016, the average base salary was $89,970. By 2021, it rose to $101,020. This means that between 2020 and 2021, biomedical engineers saw an average wage growth of around $2,700 or 2.7%. But these are actually national base salaries. There's actually certain parts of the US that are really, really good for biomedical engineers. They're basically Boston, Massachusetts, Minneapolis, and San Francisco. We're actually going to leave out San Francisco because it's so expensive. But if you were to be employed as a biomedical engineer in Minneapolis, for example, the average base salary is $120,340. When you factor in 30% benefits, total compensation comes to around $156,000 a year before any kind of overtime. Meanwhile, in Boston, Massachusetts, the average base salary for a biomedical engineer is $116,420 with benefits probably around $151,000 a year before any kind of overtime or bonus. So biomedical engineers can do really, really well, especially in very specific markets such as Minneapolis and Boston. Next up, what kind of demand is there right now for biomedical engineers. The first thing to understand about this field is that it is very, very tiny. There's certain engineering fields that are way bigger than biomedical engineering. In 2021, there were 17,190 employed biomedical engineers, making this one of the smallest engineering workforces in the United States. There are vastly more civil engineers, industrial engineers, mechanical engineers, and there's also vastly more software developers. And we actually do have some bad news regarding the demand for biomedical engineers. According to the government, the number of employed biomedical engineers has been falling since 2016. In 2016, the government recorded around 21,000 employed biomedical engineers in the United States. By 2021, there were around 17,000 employed biomedical engineers, meaning there was a loss of 3,400 jobs between 2016 and 2021. So definitely not the best news for biomedical engineers. This could be like a reclassification of jobs. I mean, what if, for example, if a biomedical engineer is pretty much coding all day and creating some new software for some healthcare system, maybe they reclassify that job as a kind of a software developer because they're more of a software developer than biomedical engineer at that point. That could be going on, but still not the best sign that the government is seeing a loss of jobs for biomedical engineers. Another thing we can look at is job postings. Do the job posting numbers also show this lack of demand for biomedical engineers? And this is actually kind of a bright spot. I actually did see plenty of job postings for biomedical engineers. On Glassdoor.com, I found 1,779 job postings in the United States for biomedical engineers. On Indeed, I found 2,797. And on LinkedIn, I found 6,815 job postings. So when you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, especially with the number of job postings on LinkedIn for biomedical engineers, actually looks pretty good. It looks like there's plenty of demand for biomedical engineers. But also keep in mind, the outlook for biomedical engineers isn't quite as strong as some of the other engineering fields. When you look at the outlook for aerospace, chemical, civil, materials, petroleum, and software development, the government outlook for those fields is higher than biomedical engineers on a percentage basis. Finally, we get to the personality of biomedical engineers. Some people like this kind of stuff. Some people think the, the Myers-Briggs assessment is completely worthless, doesn't measure anything. I understand it either way, but it is kind of fun to look at which Myers-Briggs types tend to flock to biomedical engineers. According to the Myers-Briggs company, the most commonly found Myers-Briggs type in biomedical engineering is the ISTJ, number two is the ESTJ, and number three is the ENTP. Meanwhile, the most likely Myers-Briggs type to become a biomedical engineer is the INTJ, the mastermind, followed by the ENTP, and then number three is the ENTJ.
So I hope this particular video helped you figure out whether biomedical engineering is the field for you. Are you a biomedical engineer? Let us know down in the comments below. Would love to hear what you enjoy about this occupation and what you dislike about this occupation. Thanks so much for watching. We have plenty of other content on other engineering fields as well as many other occupations. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.